Morning, Jamie. Good morning. How are you today? Well, I'm all right. I just I, actually, I'm just about to get a cold, so it's a great time to be on radio, isn't it? Yeah, but you see, you can still do it because you've got all that technique. Yeah. You talk about your your voice training and your exercises in your book. Yeah. How, how often do you do those exercises? Because I did think when I was reading it last night, I thought, oh, I need, I need, I always, I'm always looking for throat tips. Well, I, actually, I do them every day. So, what do you do? I do um, flexible exercises for my tongue and my lips, breathing exercises, and uh, voice production. All right. Again, okay, it runs in the family. Uh, being able to, to sort of to 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 project and to talk in public, doesn't it? Communicating. You and yes. your bros. Communicating. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. so, and the, the, obviously, everybody gets a mention in the book. It's a, it's you describe it because it, it's it's a photographic memoir it it's a written memoir but it's not gimmicky in any way it's beautiful is what it is um the photograph on the front i'm presuming you didn't take because it unless it it is some kind of sort of um analog selfie actually that photograph on the front of the book is when i was just about to go onto the set in the series press right and i saw myself in the mirror so in is, my trailer so it is a selfie and I t it's a <laughs> selfie because <laughs> they said the first selfies were like uh, uh, self-portraits by Van Gogh and things because they yeah. were in fact selfies but you've done a selfie here we're good for you um, so let's talk about photography first of all cracking photographs in it all the way through the book I'm sure you've taken millions of photographs in your life inspired by Grandad Jim yeah yeah. he put me on his knee at the age of eight yep. uh, taught me all the technical stuff about phot photography and cameras and then sent me out to photograph and then gave me notes on all my pictures with composition exposure speed etc and then told me later, as I was growing up with my camera, that the most important lens that you can ever have on your camera or use is the one God gives you, your eye. Right. And you photograph not what you see, but how you see. In other words, you re respond emotionally to an image or something that you just go, ooh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And then you photograph what made you go, ooh. Uh, you talk about your career in this. You talk about 25 years of Poirot. By the way, congratulations on your 50th year. Thank you. 50th yes. year this year? This year, it, yes. Was, it, was that a, a driving force behind? Because you've been asked to write your, your story many, many times. In the I past. have, yes. And I, ne I never wanted to write a typical autobiography. I've been asked many, many times. And I'm personally not a fan of actors' autobiography. <laughs> I, and it's a terrible thing to say, but it's only a personal reaction right. because it tends to be... I did this, followed by that, followed by that, followed by that, and who I met, who I, 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 I. I didn't want a book like that. I'm not really interested in me. I want you to share who I am rather than all the things that I've done. Yeah, I'm not really uh, interested. What you are, I didn't realise, jazz drummer. Yeah. Yeah, want, yeah, wannabe clarinetist. Yeah. That's a great little tale. Just just give us a, a quick praise of that. Well, a quick praise of that was where I was driving a car to the to the Barbican. With, I was doing a show for the RSC, and I heard Mozart's slow movement to the clarinet concerto, and I had to stop because I teared up. And the next day I rang a clarinet teacher in where I was living at the time in Ealing and I rang him and I said uh, you teach the clarinet he said yes um, and I said I'm, I'm very interested in talking to you about it so he said how old are your children <laughs> and I said no it's me <laughs> I want me and he said how old are you and at that time I was <laughs> a good 40 or plus and he said no way no way, you, you can't learn now. You need your breath, you yeah, need yeah, your yeah. lips. No. So you need time and attention. Yeah, so he came and auditioned me. And he said, actually, because you're an actor and you do breathe and you do all your voice exercises, I think I can teach you. And he got me to grade five. He got you to grade five. And you could play, well, how, how much of, of that particular tune could you play in the end? <laughs> Honestly, sixteen bars, twenty bars. About, oh, about twenty bars. Okay, that's all right. And would you, bro would your brother David, who loves, because he's written, John. He, sorry, John's written biographies, hasn't he? Now he's written biographies oh. of wonderful uh, composers, yeah. Tchaikovsky, Verdi. Did you ever play Beethoven. in front of him? Yeah, I, did he recognise uh, it? Yeah, yeah. But what I played with John was the drums because we had a jazz band right. when we were teenagers, and I was a percussionist then. And then we went to what was then known as jazz shows, jazz club. Yeah. And I used to stand in, well, I, I was taught by Johnny Richardson of Terry Lightfoot's all-star jazz band. And I actually sat in and played, wow, with Acker Bilk, Kenny Ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all those wonderful, wonderful people. See, I thought you had something a little sort of 
creatively obtuse about you. <laughs> and, and that, you know, if you're a drummer, that's one thing. But if you're a jazz drummer, that's like being a spin bowler. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, you know, even to this day, if ever I listen yeah. to any piece of modern music or, or jazz or modern yeah. jazz, or tra- I'm always hearing the drum. Always. Yeah, I yeah. cannot help it. Okay. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.